So the final part of the morning is uh, Jim Bound Awards. And Tim's helping me here. Thank you very much. So I'm really pleased, and this has become tradition of this meeting. I'm really pleased that uh, I can, on behalf of IPv6 Forum, present these awards to companies that, and that's the condition, uh, send more than 20% of their traffic to the internet on IPv6. And the, the measurement is done, is, uh, is done by APNIC, and that's what IPv6 Forum watches. But um, there are other measurements, as we will hear later uh, from Olivier. Right now, I would like to start and invite on stage Nick on behalf of EEBT, because E, part of the BT group, is the largest and most advanced digital communications company in Britain. And I agree with that, because they are actually the only ones doing IPv6, right? Um, and everybody else can learn from you guys. They are delivering mobile and fixed communication services, serve more than 31 million connections across mobile, fixed, and wholesale networks. In 2016, it turned on IPv6 for internet services after successfully running the protocol within the core for voice. And at that point, the IPv6 internet services were for eligible customers with Android devices in IPv6 only mode using 464X slot, as we heard. Or this year, he introduced IPv6 only to eligible customers on Apple handset, and they saw a surge in IPv6 deployment. And also because you are using different AS, that's the reason why we were not able to give you the award at the same time as with BT. Mm -hmm. So I'm really pleased that uh, now finally it's visible on the measurements. So uh, congratulations. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good work. Good work. Look there, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next one. Thank you, Nick. Uh, the next one is uh, Facebook. And I must say, this is a little bit of a measurement or reporting error because everybody knows very well that Facebook, are the drive, together with Google, were the two big driving forces on the internet. That uh, because you enabled your content with IPv6, that would actually then give good reason to the ISPs to get on with things. Uh, but I also know that there is no global IPv6 forum that could uh, present these awards. So you're getting one here in the UK. Uh, if there was one in the US, I'm sure they would be very happy to present it to Paul Saab. So let me just uh, recap uh, Facebook's IPv6 deployment. So they announced to be IPv6 ready in June 2011 as they joined in the World IPv6 Day initiative with Google and many others. Around 2013, 2014, they also started transitioning all their data centers to IPv6 only. And Paul Saab, I'm sure many people in this room have heard the name or have met Paul. Uh, he announced that at the IPv6 World Congress in 2014 in Paris. An interesting point is that one of the reasons that drove deployments internally was the way they segmented their IPv4 data center networks. A slash 24 per rack, which was a really genius idea. That made it so that they were going to run out of V4 space as more and more machines in data centers were added to their infrastructure. They would have to head either find a new way to segment the network or use a large space like IPv6, and they went for the latter because it was the right thing to do. And I know at the time, one of your top guys told you, if you are doing something, be best at it. So that's what you guys did. Currently, everything speaks 100% IPv6 internally, with most things only capable to talk IPv6. On top of that, when they look at IPv6, they also see that it allows them for things that were impossible, uh, unthinkable with IPv4, like in identify a locator address, ILA, with IPv6, IP per task process, IPv6 flow label hashing for ECMP, and segment routing v6. What do we see? Uh, today on the internet is 99.5% of traffic is on IPv6. So, Angelo, I'm really pleased if I find you. <laughs> oh, God, I knew this was going to happen. All right. Well, congratulations. Okay. Well done. I will give you the bag. Here's the bag. Um, okay, the next one, John from Google. Okay, while John is making his way here to accept the award on behalf of Google, they started their IPv6 effort more than 10 years ago, as we heard from Jen. 
making most user visible products and services IPv6 enabled. Soon after that, they started enabling IPv6 for Google corporate network as well. It's actually hard for them to really name a single driver for the deployment as they had multiple reasons to make their corp infrastructure v6 enabled. Some of the reasons, but it's not only limited to these, are that they, they are running out of IPv4 addresses, and I know the pain, and including that's include private. They need to eat their own dog food and support developing IPv6 ready and IPv6 only products. IPv6 brings operational simplicity, that means IPv6 only, without NAT in the network. And of course, as we know from Jen, IPv6 is cool afterwards. So today, what we see coming from Google corporate network is more than 90% of traffic on IPv6. So John, sincere congratulations. And again, same story as with Facebook. I'm sure this was like um, some reporting error, but very pleased that here in the UK, we can uh, give you this award. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. I'll give you this handsome back. Okay, next one. I would like to invite on stage Laszlo from Hyperoptic. Because Hyperoptic, um, they spoke here last year um, about their IP, IPv6 plans and the deployment, but the measurements were not um, over 20% at the time. However, this year, we can see over 45% of their traffic on IPv6 here in the UK. And they are a fiber to the building internet service provider offering services here in the UK. They work with freeholders, developers, property managers, and residents. And they are currently powering premises in 28 UK towns and cities. The most important part for us is it's all on IPv6. Okay, so, Laszlo, sincere congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations, guys, with your award. Yeah. <laughs> nice one, nice one. Good. Good. Great. Thank you. So next one, I would like to invite David from uh, Imperial College London. So while David is making his way, when asked about their IPv6 deployment, he said that uh, they started deploying in earnest in 2010 and have been dual stack on almost all of colleges production and bring your own device networks, wired and wireless, since 2013. Over a third of their standard internet traffic is IPv6, and the traffic over their high energy physics, LHC1 peering, is mostly IPv6. I think we might hear something more about that later, right? Uh, combined, our Jan their Janet links run often at 75% of IPv6 utilization. Internally, 95% of the traffic on the dual stake home directory servers are IPv6, and their new six petabyte research storage is IPv6 only, which is their preference for new internal services. So David, uh, we see today uh, quite a significant number of traffic on IPv6, and I'm really pleased that uh, you can be recognized here for all your work. So congratulations. <laughs> Sorry, I just need to, yeah, this one is for you. Okay. Hard work, and I know you just continue working away. There is Tim. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. So next one uh, is Liquid Telecom, and Matthew, if you would like to step on the stage, I just make sure I've got the right, the right award. Very good. We have heard about Liquin just a little while ago. And um, as Matthew says, uh, they, for them, IPv6 is not an afterthought. It's something that is an uh, integral part of all their work. They are really leading the way and leading IPv6 in Africa. So I'm pleased that uh, I can present this award to you because it's well deserved. <laughs> Have a look at him here. Congratulations. And I give you this handy handbag as well. Okay. Um, the company number seven that is being recognized is Queen Mary and Westview College, University of London. And I'm not sure if Chris is here. Yes, Chris, Chris and Terry, very good. I would like to welcome them on stage. So Queen Mary University of London is one of the UK's leading research universities 
committed to improving social justice and achieving the previously unthinkable with staff and students from 160 nationalities, and I know also very many countries. Um, they are one of the most diverse higher education institutions in the world. So just out of curiosity, how many countries do you've got presence in? Absolutely no idea. I know, <laughs> based, based, on, based on what I read on your web, you've got over 4,000 students in offshore uh, locations, like in so other countries. There's a medical school in Malta, there's um, links with universities in China. Okay, so even more reason to connect them on IPv6. Thank you for that. I think that was one of the original drivers, actually. So yes. Uh, China has IPv6 connectivity. So as, uh, as Chris is saying, uh, the offshore... Um, Colleges were basically one of the main reasons for deploying IPv6. So, guys, well done. Thank Great you, effort. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this for you. Yeah. Big smile. Excellent. Thank you. And finally, I'm not sure if anybody is here from Voxility. I've been in touch with them. They are a small hosting provider um, company which is based in the US, but also here in the UK. I think uh, they were recently at a links meeting, so uh, I've been in touch with them. To our surprise, when they popped up on the on the chart, they sent actually over 74% of uh, of the traffic on IPv6 from the network. So I'll be I'll be sending the award to their office here in London. But uh, really, I just maybe I take a picture and we can uh, we can. <laughs> I'm gonna. You, you can take a picture. <laughs> It's for them. They are still getting the reward, award. Okay, good. Thank you, guys.